بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ٹیکنیکلی ایکسپلین ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی دی فور ایئر ٹرانسفارم دا فور ایئر ٹرانسفارم از اے میتھمیٹیکل ٹول فار فریکوینسی اینالیسز آف اے پیریوڈک سگنلس ناؤ وی نو دیٹ ان ٹائم ڈومین وی کین سی ہاؤ دی ایمپلیٹیوڈ آف دا سگنل ویریز ود ٹائم بٹ سم ٹائمز آل دی انفارمیشن گیون ان دا ٹائم ڈومین از ناٹ سفیشینٹ This makes us to move to the frequency domain of the signal for extracting more information about the signal. This movement or this translation from one domain to another domain is known as transformation. Now luckily we have some tools for converting a time domain signal into a frequency domain signal. Fourier series and Fourier transform are the two prominent tools, tools for the frequency analysis of signals. Now in the previous lecture we studied that Fourier series is used for periodic signals. Now the Fourier transform is used for aperiodic signals. So Fourier transform is a mathematical tool and it is used for the frequency analysis of aperiodic signal. So suppose if we have a signal or a function g of t and we take its Fourier transform we are going to get a function for example g of omega or g of f here omega is the uh, radian per second or the angular frequency and this f is our simple frequency so this fourier transform converts a function of time domain into a frequency domain and the mathematical definition of this fourier transform is that j omega is equal to integration from infinite from minus infinity to infinity d of t e power minus j omega t dt let me name it as equation 1 so equation 1 is a mathematical representation of the fourier transform we can also take the inverse fourier transform so this is my fourier transform and i can also take the inverse fourier transform and for inverse fourier transform if we have a function in frequency domain that can be converted into a time domain which is again a transformation so to convert a function in frequency domain to time domain we have the formula g of t is equal to 1 by 2 pi again the integration is from minus infinity to infinity we have g of omega e power j omega t t omega so this equation number 2 is actually the equation for the inverse fourier transform if you want to convert a signal from the frequency domain to the time domain we can take the inverse fourier transform similarly if we have a function in f domain that can be or that can also be converted using the inverse fourier transform formula in that case we are going to have the formula g e of t is equal to infin minus infinity to infinity g e of f e power j omega t df let me name it as equation 3 so with the help of fourier transform we can convert a time domain signal uh, which is a aperiodic signal into the frequency to, do, domain similarly we can convert a frequency domain signal into a time domain by taking the inverse fourier transform now for the fourier transform to exist there are certain conditions which are called the dirichlet conditions the dirichlet conditions are three in number number one is that there should be finite number of maxima and minima over any finite interval remember that in case of fourier series there also exist the dirichlet conditions but this condition was that finite number of maxima and minima over the time period in this case we have our any finite interval so you need to know the difference between the conditions of existence of the fourier series and the fourier transform in that case there we have the over the time period in this case we have over any finite interval the second is the finite number of discontinuities over any finite interval again for the fourier series the second dirichlet condition was finite number of discontinuities over any time period but in this case we are going to uh, consider any finite interval the third and most important one, one is that signal should be absolutely integrable that means that if we integrate a signal from if we integrate a signal for example if we have a signal t e of t and we integrate it from infinity and minus infinity we take the absolute value 
and if we integrate it from minus infinity to infinity and if we get a finite value then this signal is absolutely integrable and its Fourier transform exists but if it is not absolutely integrable then its Fourier transform may not exist. Remember that these Dirichlet conditions are sufficient but not necessary for the existence of Fourier transform. So let me write over here these Dirichlet conditions let me write over here these Dirichlet conditions are sufficient but not necessary for the existence of the Fourier transform. Sufficient but not necessary. Now what does this mean? This means that if we have a signal and this that signal uh, fulfills all the Dirichlet conditions then it is sure that this that signal Fourier transform is going to exist. So if a signal satisfies the Dirichlet conditions it is sure that that signal Fourier transform is going to exist. But there are signals that violates one or more of these Dirichlet conditions but still its Fourier transform exists. That is why we say that this Dirichlet conditions are sufficient but not necessary. For example, the sync function which is given as we are going to study the sync function in our coming lecture or probably today. The sync function is given as sine x by x and this is my sync function denoted by sync of x. This sync function is not absolutely integrable over the uh, uh, over this whole interval. So this sync function is not absolutely integrable but still its Fourier transform exists. So this sync function violates the Dirichlet condition but still its Fourier transform exists. That is why in general we can say that any signal that can be generated practically its Fourier transform exists. Thus we can say that the physical existence of the signal is sufficient condition for Fourier transform existence. But even this uh, condition, this physical existence criteria is also not necessary for the existence of Fourier transform. For example, the impulse signal. We know that impulse signal doesn't physically exist but still its impulse, uh, its Fourier transform exists. So this so if, if we have any signal which is physically uh, realizable, which has physical existence, which can be generated practically, its Fourier transform is going to be exist, uh, existent. But it's not necessary that if the signal cannot be practically generated, its Fourier transform is not going to exist. So we are, this, we are going to say that these Dirichlet conditions are sufficient but not necessary. The other example can be of the step function. The step function again is not absolutely integrable function. So if you take uh, in a, if, if you take integration from zero to infinity because step function varies from zero to infinity, we are not going to get uh, a finite value over this whole integration from zero to infinite. But still, its Fourier transform exists. So we can conclude that these Dirichlet conditions are sufficient, which means that if any function uh, satisfied all these Dirichlet condition its Fourier transform is going to exist but these are not necessary which means that if any function or any signal uh, does not fulfill one one or more of these condition its Fourier transform still might exist. Next is the properties of Fourier transform. So the first property is linearity. Suppose if we have a function d1 of t whose Fourier transform is d1 of f and similarly if we have a function another function which is g2 of t whose Fourier transform is g2 of f and for example we have constants which are a1 and a2 then according to the property of linearity a1 g of t plus a2 g of t the Fourier transform of this signal is going to be a1 d1 of f plus a2 g2 of f where this g1 of f is the Fourier transform of g1 of 2 and this g2 of f is the Fourier transform of g2 of t. So the Fourier transform obeys the linearity property and this is not something surprising because Fourier transform has integration and integration is a linear operation that is why 
the property of Fourier transform is one of the property of the Fourier transform is linearity. Next property is conjugation. This is also called conjugate symmetry property. So if we have a real function which is g of t, for suppose g of t is my real function, then g f g of f is the uh, Fourier transform of this g of t and g of f are going to be my complex conjugates, which means that I am going to have g of minus f is equal to g of f with conjugate. So this means that we are going to have the amplitude like g of minus f amplitude of g of minus f is going to be equal to the amplitude of g of f where s phase is going to be equal to phase of minus f is going to be equal to minus phase of f so it means that the amplitude is an even function and this phase is an odd function so this property is called complex conjugate property and this property is valid for only real time g of t. Now there are other very important properties of the Fourier transform but we will discuss them later. Let us first do some examples and study some important functions. So we have an example where we are told to find the Fourier transform of the signal e power minus a t u of t. So let us find the Fourier transform. We know the formula for the Fourier transform. Let me write the solution. So now we can write g of omega is equal to minus infinity to infinity g of t e power minus j omega t dt. And in this case g of t is my e power minus a t u of t. So I am going to replace this g of t with e power minus a t u of t. So this will be equal to minus infinity to infinity e power minus a t u of t dt. Now we know the range of u of t which is from 0 to infinity. So I am going to change the limit of the integration and this will be equal to 0 to infinity. We are going to get e power, I have forgot e power minus j omega t here. This is also here. So this will be e power minus a t e power minus j omega t dt. So I can write this as again the integration is from 0 to infinity e power minus a plus j omega t dt. Now let us take the integration. So this will be equal to we know that integration of minus a t is equal to e power minus a t divided by minus a. So I am going to use this formula. So let us take the integration. We are going to have e power minus a plus j omega t divided by minus a plus j omega. And the limits of integration are from the infinity to zero. So we are going to have g of omega minus 1 plus a plus j of omega and this will be e power minus infinity minus e power minus 0. So e power minus infinity is 0 and this is going to be 1. So we are going to have 0 minus 1 and when that minus 1 is multiplied by this minus 1 we are going to get 1. So we are going to have g of omega is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by a plus j omega here a should be greater than 0 now this is the required Fourier transform of this function e power minus a t u of t now if you find if we if you want to find the magnitude and the phase we can easily find the magnitude and the phase so the magnitude is going to be equal to 1 by a square plus omega square under root Similarly, we can also find the phase. Phase will be equal to minus tangent inverse omega by a. And we can also plot this. So this is my function g of t which is e power minus a t u of t and this is a decreasing function which is decreasing exponentially. And as time approaches to infinity, 
this function amplitude approaches to zero. That's why we have a greater than zero. That's why we have written a greater than zero for this case because if we had a less than zero, then this is going to approach to some uh, positive infinity. Then this will be an increasing exponential. In that case, the Fourier transform will not exist. So that's why it is a decreasing exponential. Its Fourier transform exists, and we have a greater than zero. Now this is my amplitude plot. So the amplitude is given as this thing. This is my amplitude for plot. At omega is equal to zero, I'm going to have the amplitude of one by a. And as I am increasing the omega, the amplitude is going to decrease. And this is my even function. You can see from the graph, this is symmetrical about the y-axis, so this is an even function. And we can also plot the phase of the function. At again, omega is equal to zero, we have zero because tangent zero is zero. And when we approach this to some infinite value, when we approach this to the pi by two, we know that tangent pi by two is some undefined or infinite value. So that has also been shown over here for the positive pi by two and minus pi by two. Also, if you can say, if you can see, this phase is an odd function which is symmetrical about the origin.